Okay, so one of the things that I know that pastors want help with and lay leaders is knowing what kind of art forms that are occurring in our culture at large might be good for them to be exposed to as a way to say not only understand the culture and what's going on in culture but really to understand art. So let me mention a couple of examples. One is a novelist named David Maine. He's not widely known but I think pastors should know who he is. I don't think he's a Christian but he wrote three novels that are historical fictional pieces which explore three episodes in the Old Testament which I think if pastors commit to read, it'll help them understand how novels work and how novels do things that only un uniquely novels can do. Uh, one novel is called Fallen and explores the life of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. And what I love about it is he begins um, at the end of Cain's life and works his way backward. It's an incredibly poignant experience because you know how the story is going to end. It's like that movie United 93 about the plane that crashed uh, around the, in the September 11, crashed into Philadelphia, or Pennsylvania somewhere. You know how the movie ends. You know how Hamlet ends. You know how the story of Adam and Eve begins. But he does this great job of unpacking the psychological dimension, the relational, just the massive dysfunction. But it's wonderful. It's a wonderful biblical exercise, theological exercise. A second one, which is great, is Noah. And it's so fun to see how he imagines uh, Noah his wife, finding his wife, his sons, his sons finding his wives that are all from different parts of the world, all have different skills. And so you see kind of this reconstructive you know, human family. And then really what happens to a small group of people on a boat for a long time with a lot of animals. They go crazy. It's great. And then the uh, third one is Samson and he explores Samson's life. And Samson is a massively dysfunctional figure. I mean, he is a rotten, no good, guy like he is a sex maniac he's a violent man and you know sometimes it's like i just don't know if we really pay attention that this stuff is in the bible so he what he does is he slows us down and says what really does it mean for god to choose to leave this story in the scripture as something that really is despicable a brute so it's fascinating as a novelist a movie that i think to me was one of the most important movies of the last 10 years or I guess it was 99, so the last 20 years, was uh, by the filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson. I, I think really any of Paul Thomas Anderson's movies are worth a careful sit down, are worth repeated viewing, uh, not Boogie Nights. Uh, but uh, the one I think that was really, really significant was Magnolia. Because in Magnolia, he really helps us understand the visceral nature of sin and forgiveness. That sin is a visceral, dark, damaging to the soul and damaging to relationships. And what I think is so helpful about that is he, he, he doesn't let any of the characters off scot-free in a way that so many movies, Christian or not, let characters commit certain egregious acts and then as if there's no consequence. He really allows the consequences to play themselves out. And in that sense, like so much of Shakespeare, we as a viewer see it and see ourselves in it. And so there's this moment that opens up for us for our own transformation. But then he really shows how difficult, slow, and messy forgiveness is. And how in some cases forgiveness does not pan out. And how true that is for so many of our experiences, whether it's in our family, spouse, children, parents, friends that we thought were friends, and something happens, sin or hurt feelings or anger or whatever kind of comes into a friendship and breaks it up, and how you may seek forgiveness, but it doesn't. And so what does it look like for us to be faithful Christians who are people of grace, who are broken, who are sinful, who seek to be forgiving and to receive forgiveness, to live that out. So I think what Paul Thomas Anderson does is he slows it down, he particularizes it, so it makes it very sharply concrete with all these different characters whose lives intertwine. And he offers, uh, he offers two things in his movies that I think good art does. One, he offers a coherent picture. So in a sense, what he, he says is, I'm going to help you see how all the parts hold together. And that itself is a mark of beauty. One of, the, one of the three marks of beauty is sort of the sense of wholeness. And that's what we long for because we live in a fragmented, broken world. And so what art does is says, here's a picture of wholeness, of coherency. I'm going to help you make coherent sense of your lives. But what he doesn't do is he doesn't falsely resolve it into some sort of 
sort of false coherence because none of us lives a, a, a purely uh, or perfectly resolved coherent life. We are all on the way. It's only at the very end of things that our lives will finally cohere uh, and be beautiful and remade and whole. So he doesn't allow that to happen, but on the one hand, he does do what good art does, and that is say, here's a whole picture, and here's a whole picture of these, these people's lives. And I think for us as pastors, it's not, it's not an easy movie. I wouldn't, light, I wouldn't lightly recommend it. But if, if you think you have grace to watch it, it provides a great exegetical and theological commentary on what it means to be a human person. And I think it helps us receive scripture. And we see these things working themselves out. And really, it goes back to uh, Hebrews 11, that so many people live sort of these lives where, wherein God promises certain things, but they do not see the fulfillment of promises. So what does it mean for us to live faithfully, humbly, but also courageously, when we know that so many things will not resolve themselves? And so this movie, Magnolia, I think offers us a gospel kind of uh, depiction, insight, perspective, into things that are helpful for us in our work of shepherding people, taking care of people, people that are complicated, people that fight us, people <laughs> that don't want to find resolution, don't want to forgive, and we ourselves uh, find ourselves doing those various kinds of things. I think Paul Thomas Anderson is one of the most excellent filmmakers who really cares about writing, good writing, good script, careful construction of characters, but cinematically says things that I could never say equally well in any kind of discursive, analytical sermon or writing essay or book. So I think it's very valuable, but again, it's a difficult kind of movie, so some folks probably shouldn't watch it. There are other things that could be watched, but I think David Main and Paul Thomas Anderson are really helpful for us. And so if you apprentice yourself to them, I think you will find opened up for you a very rich world that uh, there will be God's grace kind of at work in there and the gospel at work and it will nourish, challenge, but also equip, help us do our work better. So those would be our recommendations.